I wanted to be a photographer. I'd had success as a press photographer. While I was working uh, in the camera shop, I learned that there really wasn't much employment for photographers at that time. And I decided that I would pursue chemistry full-time in my mind instead. I learned about asthma being a problem when my younger sister had asthma. And it was really disheartening to hear her wheeze and to struggle for breath. My name is Charlie Thiel, and this is my impact story. In the 1950s, the squeeze bulb nebulizer was the most effective device available to treat asthma, but it was difficult to use and didn't deliver a precise dose. By 1955, Charlie was working as a chemist at Riker Laboratories, where he heard a story about a little girl with an idea. Susie was a 13-year-old daughter of Dr. George Mason, president of Riker. She was fussing with her squeeze bulb nebulizer one day and she turned to her dad and said, Daddy, why can't they put my asthma medicine in a spray can like they do hairspray? Well, Dr. Mason realized that she had really hit on something and he went to the three-person development laboratory and Irving Porsche was head of that laboratory. Irving and his team quickly got to work, and within a year, Susie's question was answered with a groundbreaking invention, the metered dose inhaler. Not long afterwards, Charlie was asked to create an aerosol hydrocortisone for the inhaler that researchers hoped would prevent asthma attacks altogether. Charlie created a new formulation, but there was a problem. The formulation looked great until it was sprayed the droplets that came out of the mouthpiece were so large that they splattered in a patient's mouth and never made it into their lungs. Then Charlie recalled seeing a bottle of hydrocortisone that was labeled microfine. He tried it out and when he sprayed the formulation, it worked. Charlie had done it. His creation enhanced the inhaler, providing patients with even more powerful relief. While his invention was groundbreaking, it wasn't until late in his career that Charlie would feel the full impact of his work. I was on a speaking tour in Sydney, Australia. I had a, a conversation with a, a pulmonologist who told me he had been in practice for 45 years and he himself had had asthma since age seven. Well, after the dinner was over and the talks were over, he came up to me and gave me a bear hug and said, Charlie, if it weren't for your invention, I would be dead. Charlie ultimately understood the need to ensure inventions like his would be available to as many people as possible. In the late 1980s, he began volunteering at USP, a scientific organization that sets quality standards for medicines worldwide. As a scientific volunteer, Charlie helped develop standards for medical devices and innovations that ultimately improved inhaled drug delivery for millions of people. It was always my intention to keep the patient first. And that's so important because we're protecting the health of millions of people all over the world.